Hello, what culture? It's me, Simon Miller, the king of ups and downs. And if you're not sure, Ups and Downs is the show where we go through a load of WWE TV programs and we give the good bits an up and we give the bad bits a down. It's basically one big review and a way to actually find out about what happened on WWE TV without actually watching the TV. So as we do get to the end of 2017, a time where usually WWE slows down a little bit, we did have an episode of SmackDown that is the go-home show for Clash of Champions. You know what? It had its moments. So let's ups and downs. Now the very, very start of SmackDown was so stupid and so ridiculous that it put a massive smile on my face because basically Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn are amazing. It gets it up. Tying into all the intrigue with Daniel Bryan as we do lead into the pay-per-view on Sunday, Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn decided to start the YEP movement. So, you know, it was like Daniel Bryan's YES movement, but they literally taped a P over where the YES was meant to be on the t-shirts. It was all basically one big campaign to try and fight back against Shane McMahon, and all of it was so over the top that you couldn't help but enjoy it, or at least that's how I found it anyway. It was short, but it was wonderful. Then SmackDown proper started, and as usual, a man came out to let us know what he thought about things and then got interrupted. However, it was pretty decent and it involved AJ Styles, so it gets enough. I mainly liked it because in one of those rare scenarios in the WWE, the good guy actually outsmarted the bad guys, and wouldn't you know it, because that did happen, it made me like the good guy more. What a surprise that is. The short version is that AJ Styles came out to cut a big promo for his title match on Sunday against Jinder Mahal before the Singh brothers interrupted him and said, AJ, we want to be in your corner at Clash of Champions because we don't like how Jinder Mahal has been treating us. At one point, he even made, well, they said that he even made them kiss their feet. So now we know that some kinky sh** has been going on backstage. Eventually, Jinder came out too, but AJ Styles was too smart for all of this because he'd seen pictures on social media of the Singh brothers hanging out with Jinder Mahal and he put them on the big screen. Now why he had these pictures all ready to go, I don't know, but let's not worry about that. I mean, it's almost like wrestling's not real or something. Anyway, AJ knew the deal. He beat out the Singhs and then he got out of there, keeping his respect intact. That's good. Still a little bit worried that he is gonna lose his title on Sunday. Please don't let that happen. He's so good and he's so over. However, like I say, all of this is enough. We then had a match between Charlotte and Ruby Riot, and well, to be honest, this whole angle's already a little bit all over the place, so it's gotta get it down. It's just messy. The bout itself was super short, so you couldn't even get into it. What you were meant to take away is that you're not really sure what side Natalia is on, because she was saying how much she loved the Riot Squad, even though you know she was telling the faces last week that, hey, I don't like them at all. So she got involved, she beat up Charlotte, and now we're left to question what the future holds. This also did set up a return for Naomi, who ran down to stop the Riot Squad from breaking Charlotte's leg, and then some other faces, I think it was Lana, Tamina, and somebody else chased them away. Great. So it was all right, but the biggest problem was when all was said and done, it didn't make me any more excited for the Lumberjack match that's going down on Sunday. So yeah, a bit of a dud this one. Just a bit of a dud. It was in another wonderful short segment with Owens and Zayn, who just went backstage. They found Daniel Bryan, who was on the phone, and they just threw a flyer in his face. Up. Didn't last long, but Daniel Bryan did take a damn long look at that flyer. What does it mean? Next, it was a pointless match between Dolph Ziggler and Baron Corbin to try and build up this US title threat match that also is happening on Sunday. I didn't like it. I didn't care. It gets a down. The whole thing barely lasted a wink of an eye, much like last week when Dolph Ziggler ran in and attacked Bobby Roode. This week, Bobby Roode ran in and attacked Dolph Ziggler. Wonderful. whoop de doo I can't wait to see, to see this match. Look at the enthusiasm on my face as my voice just gets lower and lower as I slowly lose the will to live. I mean, it will probably be decent from an in-ring point of view, but I just don't care about either of these men because WWE isn't putting them in stories to make me care about them. Also, WWE, SmackDown writer people, you just booked me two DQ matches back to back. Don't do that. A massive down now though, because apparently The Fashion Files has been made a WWE.com exclusive. Why? Now I'm glad it's still going to be going because they are a lot of fun and I know in the past I've questioned them because they felt a little bit directionless. But rather than do this, why couldn't we have given them a direction and tried to build them up a lot more? Because when they're good, they can be really good. Doesn't seem like a good sign to me and gives me the heebie-jeebies in my stomach, but we were shown the highlights of this week's episode on Smackdown and yes, on Sunday we are going to get the Bludgeon Brothers versus the Fashion Police. And you all know how that is going to end. In fact, 
Let's do a little poll and you answer in the comments below. How quickly will the Bludgeon Brothers defeat Fandang Breeze or whatever the hell they're called on Sunday? Less than a minute? Write less than a minute. Less than two minutes? Write that below. In 10 seconds? Write that below too. Let's see who wins. However, after this, we did have our weekly Bludgeon Brothers squash match. And as you know, I love the Bludgeon Brothers. I love watching them whip ass. So it gets it up. They just beat up two more jobbers, but that's all I need at the moment because I love the act. And also, one of the jobbers screamed like Ned Flanders when he found out he'd broken his wife's plant and that was hilarious. I bet you too that the Bludgeon Brothers are champs before long. At least I hope they are. And then the follow-up to all of this was another segment, this time in the ring between Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn. And they were the MPPs of the night because this was awesome too. Get that up. They made a lot of statements that they believed to have been them getting screwed on SmackDown recently. And every time one of them made one of these statements, the other one said, yep. Even the crowd began doing it, and it was great. Their goal here was for the entire SmackDown roster to come out and occupy the show, but instead only one man came out, and Daniel Bryan. He just asked, the hell are you guys doing? There was some back and forth between them all, but the long and the short of it was this. While Bryan does trust Shane, he wants to make sure there's no foibles, no mistakes, no problems after the match at Clash of Champions is done, so he will be the second guest referee. I don't know how that works. How do you have two referees? But I guess we'll find out in a few days. But it also means something is happening Sunday, people. Something is happening. Is Daniel Bryan going heel? Is Shane McMahon going heel? Are we going to get the long, the long pleasured Owens, Zayn and Bryan faction? We don't know. And the only way to find out is to watch the pay-per-view. That's what a pay-per-view should be all about. And then Aiden English and Rusev beat the Usos. Pinch me because I must be dreaming getting up. We also got the rest of the Rusev song by English. It was so good I think it made me cry. But then yeah, after some distractions on the outside, English hit a DDT and he's 2-1. That's two Smackdowns, two wins for Ruru. Now the bad bit about all of that is that it probably means come Clash of Champions, Rusev and Aiden English are going to take the loss. Hence why they have beaten the Usos and the New Day over the past two weeks. But right now we don't know that. So let's keep our fingers crossed. I hope that doesn't happen, but it is going to happen. It was then main event time and I tell you, I tell you, WWE has done such a good job with this storyline getting it up. It was Kevin Owens versus Nakamura and all the usual shenanigans you'd expect did happen, especially because Orton and Zayn were on the outside. So after a big fracas, Owens took advantage, he pop up, powerbomb Nakamura and he took the win. However, guess who made the pin? That's right, Daniel Bryan, because he had been on commentary and when the original ref accidentally got knocked out, he ran down, he put on a ref shirt and it was him that counted the one, two, three. And what does this mean? It's also, by the way, worth checking out Daniel Bryan on commentary before he did get involved because he said a lot of stuff that was like the stuff he used to say on Talking Smack, was mentioning indie promotions and everything. So what does that mean, huh? What does that mean? Huh? Indeed. Either way, this has set up Sunday brilliantly and for a pay-per-view that at one point I didn't care about, now I care and I genuinely hope WWE can pull something off that makes me throw my hands in the air or at least this hand, this hand don't work at the moment, and make me cheer because they surprised me and I had a good time. But we will see, and I do admit that a lot that happened on SmackDown does feel like filler, like the woman's stuff wasn't great, the tag team stuff seems a little bit all over the place, but that doesn't matter. If AJ Styles comes out the champion and there is a big hoo-ha with all the Daniel Bryan, Shane McMahon stuff, this will be a damn good time for all wrestling fans the world over. Now don't forget to leave a comment below and let us know what you thought about last night's SmackDown. Like, share, and subscribe. Don't do that wiggle ever again. Don't know what that was. Then head on over to whatculture.com and read yourself some articles. Follow What Culture on Twitter at WhatCultureWWE. My name is Simon from What Culture. Have a damn good wrestling week. I'll see you soon. Hey guys, thanks for watching the video. Don't forget to subscribe below. And if you're looking for more content like this, then try a few things that are floating about around my ears. It might be fun. I can't promise it though. But it might be.